We are so glad that each and every one of you are here today to worship at Kingsland. You have picked a very exciting day to be here and uh, come on in. I know there's a lot of folks out in the foyer there. Come on in. We're getting started. And uh, we are getting started by doing really one of the most, or if not the most important thing we do around here, and that is to baptize some folks. We have a, uh, a, the whole myriad today. We have a lady, we have a man, we have a younger person, and we have a little bit, not an older person, but not as young as the other person. And uh, I'm very encouraged. I'm very encouraged by the folks that are being baptized today, because you know what? It, it, it actually takes a lot of courage to get up, to walk down that aisle, and to say, hey, pastor, I want to be baptized. It takes a lot of courage to do that. Whether you're young or old, rich or poor, black or white, skinny or thin, and uh, male or female, it takes a lot of courage to do that. At the end of the service today, you're going to have an opportunity to do that. And uh, I hope you'll take advantage of it. I, and I've told both of them, or, or, or Mr. Pito anyway, I've told, I think that he, his baptism today is going to be an encouragement and a it's, it's something that's going to move other people to take action. People that need to move. People that, that have been sitting on the fence that need to make a move in that area. And I'm very pleased and, and excited about what God is doing in his life. You see, we take this very seriously. This isn't just taking a bath. Um, this, is, this is a very important ordinance. Jesus gave us the example of baptism. And uh, we know that Jesus, when he came up out of the water, which is the reason we baptize the way we do, we put people under and then bring them up out of the water, his father said, this is my son in, in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy Spirit descended on Christ as a dove. And you had the, the, all three persons of the Trinity right there in one, in one passage at one time. You see, every single one of us need Jesus. Every single one of us were born separated from God because of sin. And my son and I were riding our bikes yesterday, and we looked up and said, man, look how beautiful the world is. It is beautiful, except it started out way prettier. There was a fall, a terrible fall. After God created the heavens and the earth, there was a fall. Man sinned and inter interjected sin into the human race, and things began to die. The ground was cursed. And man got so horrible and so bad and so far away from God's original standard that he judged the world with a worldwide flood. Not a local flood, a worldwide flood. All human beings, all breathing animals were killed except for Noah. And that ark, that's not just a fairy tale, folks. That's a real ark where all those animals, two by two, and, and Noah and his family were saved. And all the way back in the Old Testament, we have the example of, of someone being saved from judgment. You see, every one of us are going to stand before God one day. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. And Jesus Christ is a human, or I guess the ark was a physical representation, a symbol of Jesus Christ. All those years later, who came and lived a perfect life, died on the cross for our sins, was buried, and rose from the grave. The only one that could pay for our sins. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, there's no forgiveness for sins. And it's kind of like if you got a fine. If you, have you ever been pulled over? Yeah, don't raise your hand, that's okay. I'm the only one who raised my hand, so we know you're all a bunch of liars. Um, just kidding, just kidding. But if you've ever been pulled over, or if you ever committed a crime, and you got a fine, and you're standing before the judge, you can say, sorry judge, it was an accident. That's not going to help you, is it? But imagine if someone walked in the door and paid your fine. That would help a lot. See, that's what Jesus Christ did. He came in and he paid the fine. He paid our penalty by hanging on that cross and taking all of our sin on him and all of God's holy wrath. Now, all these years later, what do we have to do? Well, we have to ask him. We do have to say we're sorry, but it's so much more. We repent. We turn away from our sins. We place our, place our trust, our faith completely in Jesus Christ for salvation. We receive him as Lord and Savior. And he comes in and he totally changes us. At that moment, you could say we were baptized inside or baptized by the Holy Spirit. After you've made that decision to become a faithful personal, to have a personal relationship with Christ and be a faithful, devoted follower of Christ, well then, and only then, you walk through these waters of baptism. You say, you know what? I belong to Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's the power of God and the salvation. And, and if that's you, or, or maybe today you've come and you think, man, I, that's what I want to do. I want to give my heart to Jesus today. I want to have forgiveness. I want to have a home in heaven. Well, come and talk to me about it. We can, we can talk about that. We can pray about it. You can give your heart to Jesus today, and then you can do what Candace and what Bernie are doing, you can come up and say, you know what, I did that, everything's decided, I've been saved, and now I'm taking that first big step of obedience by being baptized publicly. 
So Candace, come on down. Let's do this. I know your family's super proud. All of Candace's family, raise your hand, please. We want to make sure everybody knows where you are. Come on down. We know this, this family's super proud of her and uh, several generations in the church here of your family. And we are just so excited. Candace is 13 years old. Gave her heart to Jesus a while back, long ago. But, but again, coming up here and doing this is a big deal, folks. This is to be taken seriously. I love baptizing teenagers. Because Candace has thought about this. She knows what she's doing as much as a 13-year-old can. And, and she has the support of her family. But really, in the end, you know what? It's a personal decision. It's just you and Jesus. We all have to make that decision. You either choose, you choose to accept him or to reject him. That's the choice we all make individually. There are no grand... God doesn't have any grandkids. Ever think about that? He has sons and daughters. And a while back, Candace... I forget how old you were when you made that decision, but did, did you give your heart to Jesus? Have your sins been forgiven? Is, is God the Holy Spirit living in your heart? Are you saved? And that's wonderful. It's based on your public profession of faith and obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with Him in the likeness of His death, raised to walk in newness of life. Good job. Come on down, Bernie. <laughs> now, this next one I've been waiting on for a while. This guy's just an inspiration to me. Bernie Pito has been in our church for quite a while. He and his wonderful wife have been attending for, well, over a year now, hasn't it been? And uh, he's given his heart to Jesus. He grew up in a different denomination. And uh, we laugh about that because we have a lot of people from a whole lot of backgrounds in our church. Everybody's welcome, if you name the name of Jesus. And uh, he was uh, saved long ago. But he has told me and others, he's never been more excited about his relationship with Christ than he is today. Can you say that? When I'm your age, I want to be able to say that. And I, I don't know what your age is, but I'm not going to ask now. <laughs> but I'm not, I, I want to be able to say that I'm on fire for God when I get to where Bernie is. And... Um, all, all of Bernie's family, if you guys would raise your hands, we just want to acknowledge you. Thank you for being here today. Got those front rows reserved for you. For, for the guest of honor today. And, uh, or the guests of honor. So Bernie, let me ask you, have you given your heart to Jesus? Have your sins been forgiven? Is your name written in the book of life? Are you saved? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Well, based on your public profession of faith, in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Buried with him in the likeness of his death. Raised to walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bernie. Amen. That's what it's all about, folks. Maybe your day is next Sunday. Just let me know. We'll do it. Today's a special day at Kingsland. We have some special, wonderful guests that have come a long way to minister to us in song. And uh, you can sing with them. Uh, you can get involved with what they're doing. Folks, this is not a concert. You are not at a concert, okay? Uh, we are here to worship the Lord together. Please do not spectate. Uh, but if you're here to spectate, you came to the wrong place. If you're here to worship the Lord with your, with your song, with your words, with an open heart, with your money. Oh, man, last week, what an awesome day. We, we, we revolved last Sunday on the subject of giving. And uh, you responded in an amazing way. Thank you, Kingsland Baptist Church, for being so sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your lives, realizing that when you invest your resources into the kingdom, that it makes a huge, huge difference. Thank you for doing that. I truly appreciate you for that. It, it, I hope that you're here to participate in worship. Are, are you here to do that? If so, would you stand with me and bow your heads and close your eyes as we just take a, a moment of solemn reverence before the Lord. Cedarville's group is here. Cedarville University is going to lead us in worship today. They met with our youth this morning. We, there wasn't an empty seat in the entire youth room this morning. God did great things in the lives of our teenagers today through, the, through these guys. And um, so we're, we're, we're very thankful to have them here, but I fear that someone's going to think this is a show or something like that. It's not. It's not a show. It's not a concert. not a performance. We're here to worship the Lord together. And Father, we bow before you right now. 
asking that you would do great and mighty things in our presence today. You already have. Thank you for Candace. Thank you for her sweet spirit and her heart at 13, has her whole life in front of her, and she wants to serve you with it. She has publicly identified herself as a disciple. Walking through these waters of baptism, Lord, I pray that you would take her from this day to whatever you have planned for her in the future, and that she would achieve every goal, every vision, every purpose that you've created her for. Thank you for her family and all that they mean to this church and all that they mean to me. We love them. And Lord, I thank you for Bernie and his example, coming down and doing this at his age. So excited, so zealous. He couldn't even go to sleep last night. So excited about his relationship with Christ. Oh God, we praise you for that. Lord, I pray for the one that does not yet know you, that may be listening to the radio today or to, on Friday night or watching the television broadcast, or maybe even sitting right here in this room with us right now. Lord, I pray that that man, that woman, that teenager, that boy, that girl, would realize today that you love them more than anything. You love them so much that you died for them. You paid their fine. And all they have to do is accept. All they have to do is repent of their sins and turn to you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And Lord, you've done that for so many of us here. We just cannot help but praise you. We cannot help but just to worship you and to say, Thank you, Jesus. With all our heart, soul, and mind, we worship you now. Lord, I pray that our people will respond, that this room, this place, will be filled with praise and worship and honor and adoration for our great God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hey, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, this is the opportunity to be here. We have been very blessed already. We actually uh, were able to uh, be at Sloan's last night uh, and host Sloan's and uh, had an awesome dinner, uh, which was really good. And then, so I had some blueberry delight for the first time, and it was great. I was very happy after eating my blueberry delight. So, thank you guys just for opening your homes to us and for putting us up for the night, um, kind of just a quick stranger. So, we appreciate that. Uh, thank you guys for your hospitality. And we just want you to know it's really good to be here with you this morning. Um, and I just want to echo what Pastor said just about worshiping with us this morning. Um, that is our heart's desire and our passion. Um, as we've been traveling around, and, and this might be called like a, I don't know, a concert, or book, but please don't move it on. Please worship with us this morning. Um, that's truly our desire. And you may know some of the songs, you may not, but we'll have the words to all the songs up on the screens. So please feel free to sing along and join with us this morning in worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
software this year, it's in the middle of studying three stuff.
Thank you, Heart Song, for the wonderful music. Would you like to hear some more of their songs? Would you like to hear some more of their songs? And we thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus. By His stripes we were healed. And today, if you are uh, maybe the first time you've ever been here at Kingsman, we don't know anything about you, technically. It would help us a lot if you would take your communication card out of the bulletin and let us know how you heard about us. Maybe give us a little information there. And uh, we would truly appreciate when the offering plate comes by in a few minutes if you would just put that in. And uh, tonight, be back at 6.30 for our business meeting. Uh, a lot of tonight's business meeting will be the business of prayer and praise. So I hope that you'll come back. And uh, I wish Cedarville could be back with us because that would really liven things up. But, um, but it might be a little more mellow than this. But you know what? The Lord's going to be here. We're going to do His business. And we're going we're gonna to pray. And we're going to look at these needs. Do you see these needs inside your bulletin? There are many. We're going to pray for our people. Many of them have already been... We couldn't even get the bulletin out before they were already met. I thought that was kind of cool. A lot of people are stepping up to meet these needs. But uh, the main purpose of having this here was to give folks an anonymous way to say, Lord Jesus, I need something. And um, we'll pray for that. And you can pray for that. And I've already prayed through this several times. And, um, and I hope that you will, you will, if the Lord lays on your heart to meet one of these needs, be God's vessel of meeting that need. Next Sunday night, we have our family fun night at Holiday Bowl. Last year, that was just a blast. Uh, it's going to be great next week, too. So make plans to do that. I think the prices are cheaper this year, so that's pretty cool. And um, at this time, before we go any further, let's dismiss the kids to kids zone. Little ones that are in kids zone, that's kindergarten to second grade, going into, I think, um, head on out. And if you're an adult, you can go, too, if you want to. All right, so we know we have a business meeting tonight in our... Family fun night next week. And Heart Song from Cedarville, thank you for being with us today. We really appreciate your, your music and your ministry. And right now I'm going to ask our, our newest deacon, one of our newest deacons, Clarence Alley, if he would come up and he's going to uh, pray for the offering if someone will let him have a microphone. And um, let's get ready to give and to be used as, as, uh, as resources for God's kingdom. Will you do that, Mr. Alley?
All right, well, I'm going to take just a little bit of time to come um, to kind of share with you just a little bit of my story, uh, kind of where I came from, how I grew up. I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, I had two awesome parents who really just, from a young age, kind of poured into me, um, deeply loved me, and deeply cared for me. Um, I have three sisters, three lovely, beautiful sisters. Uh, actually, my parents had four of us in four years. So, we are very close to age. Uh, with all those ladies running around the house, my dad and I, very tight. It's been a lot of time ago. Um, and that's been a blessing. Uh, and I've really enjoyed just my family, and, and they've been a huge encouragement and, and a big reason uh, where I am in my life today. Uh, but from a young age, my parents kind of taught us about the Bible, about Scripture, the Ten Commandments, um, what it meant to kind of obey them and uh, honor your parents and, and those kind of things, and those were good. And I ended up going to Christian high school, and I uh, was blessed through that, and obviously I go to Cedar Hill University now, which is a Christian university, and those things have all been good. But, but I realized also um, that there's some danger just to be like, constantly surrounded by um, the Bible and the Word of God, and hearing about who God is and the Gospel, and, and hear about this time, time, and time, and time, and time again. And just as humans, I think, and I really saw this in my own life, it's easy for us to just start to become numb. Um, to just kind of think like, oh, you know, come on, here we go. We go the door, we read about God, and yeah, he, you know, he said it's big and all those things, but, but I, I realized that I wasn't really letting those things like impact my life. And it wasn't, it wasn't really real in my life. Like, I knew those things, and yeah, sure, like, you know, I've been surrounded by them, but, but it wasn't me. And I don't know where you are, I don't know where you're coming from, but, um, but I challenge you this morning to truly think about who God is and the beauty and the power of the gospel this morning. And it's basic, it's, it's simple, but there is power in that. And, and I, I realize, too, that a lot of times my life doesn't necessarily um, match up with all who God says he is. You know, a lot of times we say that, like, God is in control, and we can trust him, and God is love, and God is faithful, and all these things. But then I think a lot of times people from the outside will look at our lives and be like, they're, that's not big, they're God is small, they're God is not in control, look at the way they're living their lives. Those things that they say about their God can't be true, or else their lives would look a lot different than they do. And so I, I just did really challenge that question. And so I don't know where you are, not where you're coming from, but I challenge you just to take a little bit of time this morning to really think about that. To think about who God is and the claims that He makes in Scripture. And then look at your life and see if those things are matching up, see if those things are, are in line with each other. And see if, I don't know, maybe there's some things that you're kind of like holding on to or uh, not giving up or something. Maybe think about this things then. And take some time maybe this morning to really like surrender to us to the Lord. Because if those things are really true of Him, if He really is in control, if He really does hold the universe in the palm of His hand, if He is that big, that strong, that mighty, sometimes I think, I think our lives should look a lot different than we So I challenge you just to take some time this morning to really think upon who God is.
ask you a question this morning. Has God changed you from the inside out? Not about being perfect. It's not about taking a bath back there. If that's all that was, that means nothing. Has God changed you on the inside, from the inside out? Once he does that, the Bible says we're a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And then, of course, Bernie and Candace, we're so proud of you today for taking that step, that, that public step of saying, I identify with Jesus. I've been born again. I've been changed from the inside. That doesn't make me perfect. doesn't mean I've never made a mistake. doesn't mean I ever won't again. But I've been forgiven. Turn over to Philippians chapter 4. If you have your sermon notes there on your bulletin, Hold on to that. We're going to do that next week. You were hoping I'd preach a whole sermon, weren't you? I know, that's good, that's good. We'll do that next week. And I am waiting for Emily. I don't know what the last song exactly y'all are doing. But if she can do something Charlie Daniels, we would love that. So think of that, think of that and hold on to that. And um, our people, that'd be right up there, Allie. Philippians chapter 4. Just kidding. We like, some people like Charlie Daniels, I'm sure. Um, rejoice in the Lord. Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. And again, I say rejoice. I wanted to preach a sermon to you today about having the peace of God. And I'm going to do it next week. And we may get to this, this verse. There's other verses we're going to look at more next week. But folks, if God has changed you from the inside out, you don't have to plaster a fake smile up. You don't have to try really hard to be good all the time, okay? When God comes into your life and changes you, you are born again. You go from being dead to being alive. You are a walking dead man. Bishop Harry Jackson gave a message this week to us, pastors, to we pastors, at the, at the Virginia Family Foundation about being walking dead men. And he pointed out the fact that a lot of the problem in this world politically, a lot of what's going on socially in our world, is a bunch of wimpy... Noodle for a spine preachers that will not stand up for righteousness. See, he's standing up for righteousness in D.C. right now where they're dealing with some very controversial moral issues and some pastors are standing up with them, some churches are standing up with them and there are others who have no conviction. They do not believe this book. As far as I'm concerned, they're lost. But when the Holy Spirit of God comes into your life and changes you from the inside out, you're born again, you're made new, and you will rejoice. It's not like we have to say, rejoice, rejoice. No, man, rejoice. God has saved your soul. You're born again. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. He's always watching you. Let your gentleness be known. Be anxious for nothing, in verse 6, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which we'll get into in much better detail next week. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Don't you want that peace? I do. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Listen, the things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, uh, the Apostle Paul, their, their leader, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. In these verses we've just read, you have peace of mind. You have joy regardless of the circumstances you're going through. You have prayer and praise and thanksgiving. You have discipleship. Follow me as I follow Christ. And you have truth. Whatever things are true and so forth. With this group here today, and they did the whole Citadel University deal for the kids this morning. They all are signed up. And I know some of the young men are very interested in going to Cedarville. Now that they've seen all the girls, um, the, 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 we're not going to do a big cedar mill push right now. That's not what this part of the service is about. But I will say this. We need to think about how we're training up our kids. Uh, recently, we watched the uh, State of the Nation video. We only watched half of it. Maybe we watched the rest of it. But we, we or I kind of boiled that down to seven areas where we really need to make a, a stronger focus in training our children, our young people, and our adults. And you might want to write all seven down. Apologetics. Creation, biblical worldview. What are those things? Apologetics, learning to defend your faith. The biggest uh, group that is recruited for Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses in America is the Southern Baptists, because many of them don't know what they believe. They don't. They don't. They don't even know what their own church believes. They just kind of go to church once in a while. We need to be able to defend our faith. If you have something worth defending, you should be able to defend it. Creation. Six-day literal creation. I was encouraged to look at Cedarville's website last night. Guess what? 
They have that in their doctrinal statement. We believe in a six-day literal creation. Now, that's a good college. Not every Christian college teaches that, folks. Thank God for schools like Liberty, Cedarville, um, and on and on. Tennessee Temple University, where I went. Biblical worldview, teaching our young people to see things from a biblical worldview instead of what they may be learning elsewhere or certainly what they're seeing on MTV. You don't want them to have an MTV worldview. We train our kids. I would love for my kids to turn out like these guys. I don't know them all personally. But I wouldn't mind my daughter to play the violin like that. I'll tell you that right now. Her granddad would be proud. He's a violinist. I taught my little girl how to ride a bike yesterday. Alyssa. We had a helmet, elbow pads, knee pads, gloves, and long pants. Because I was waiting for her to bite the dust. (laughs) I taught her how to ride a bike. It was one of the most... I remember teaching my son, now my daughter, and my little boy later will do... And it was great! It was such an awesome experience. And she did not wipe out on the pavement. She did on the on the grass several times. So it was good to have that helmet got all twisted around. Brandon did the swing set. Like, there was a couple that were really horrible accidents. But she didn't get hurt. She now knows how to drive a, ride a bike. My little girl, six years old, probably should have did that a while back. But you know what? I'm concerned that many of us are teaching our kids how to tie their shoes, ride a bike, um, whatever. But we're not teaching them the essentials right here from the Word of God, a biblical worldview. E- evangelism, meaning having an active soul winning lifestyle, civics and politics. Yeah, we can talk about that at church. And we should be training our kids with a proper understanding of the Declaration of Independence. Does anybody have the Declaration of Independence on them right now? Anybody? Anybody? Does nobody have the. Janet does? Anybody else? Does anybody have. You done? What's wrong with you? I had a guy give me a copy of the Declaration of Independence yesterday, Mac, our bassist. Now now i got to carry it everywhere I go. We need to know a little bit more about those things and understand where we came from and America's founding. The controversial issues, abortion, homosexual marriage, and so forth. We've got to train our children and to show them what this book has to say about it and how they can live their life that way. And the church, we're losing our young people in droves out of the church We've got to train up our children. Uh, you know, we could talk about the different ways of schooling and so forth. Listen, uh, there's a lot of good Christian colleges. There's a lot of ways to get this done. There's a lot of ways to go about being proactive and training our children. But the Bible says, whatever things are true, if you're teaching your children or you're allowing your t- children to be taught a lie, why? If you're not doing something to counteract that lie, why not? Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure. Now, it says, don't be anxious, be joyful. Be pure, study what is true. And here's the last verse I'll share with you this morning. I love this. In verse 19, are you still there in Philippians chapter 4? And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches by Christ Jesus. See, we can have peace of mind. We can have joy regardless of the circumstances. Prayer and praise. Yes, you can praise and thank God even when you're sick, even when you have hard times, even when your husband's acting like a dodo bird, even when your kids aren't doing right, even when you have problems, your car didn't run white, your your house needs to be fixed, whatever, you're sick. You can still have joy. You can still disciple and be discipled. That's what we've been called to do. That's what Paul says. Follow me as I follow Christ. And that's what we should be saying to the next generation. Truth. We can know the truth and be set free by the truth. And we can have all these things. Why? Because of verse 19. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So this morning as we come to our time of invitation, I would ask you to take your need to Jesus. Many of you wrote them down last week and they're in the bulletin. You need to take it to Jesus. Don't wait for a person to meet your need. Let God meet your need. And if if God uses a person to meet your need, I can give you personal testimony in the last week And I'm not going to tell you what it is, because it's none of your business. But I had an extremely serious need, and God met my need. Miraculously, humongously, He will do the same for you. Other folks can raise their hands and give the same testimony. You have a need, you have a God who will meet that need. Take it to Him. Whatever your need is. You may have a health need, a family need, a personal need. Whatever the need is in your life today, I encourage you, take it to the Lord. The whole point of today was supposed to be uplifting, encouraging, inspiring. I hope you've been encouraged and inspired by this beautiful music. It's been so beautiful. I hope you've been encouraged by Bernie and Candace and what God did in their life. I hope, and boy, looking around, man, there's some folks in here with some unbelievably heavy, heavy 
heavy burdens. I hope that maybe you walked in here today and you're going to walk out with that burden just a little bit lifted off your shoulder. My encouragement to you right now is to take it to the Lord. He's the one who will first of all change your life, change you from the inside out. If you've not been changed from the inside out, you need to be. I think it was Bailey Smith, the evangelist, who said, God never saved anybody that he did not change. If your life has no resemblance of a Christian, you're probably not a Christian. If your life has no resemblance of what's in this book, you're probably not as a disciple. It's okay to stop and examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. And say, you know what? I want to be changed from the inside out. I don't want to play a game. I don't want to look like a certain thing. I could care less. One day you're going to die. And you're going to stand before God. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. You will stand before the God who created the universe. The God who created you. You'll give an account for your life. And it can't be, man, I really tried real hard. And I did this. And I did that. And I was really nice to this person. I paid my taxes. I never committed a crime. And that's great. Wonderful. But that's not going to get you into heaven. The only thing that's going to get you into heaven is having your sins forgiven. And all the I'm sorry's in the world aren't going to solve that. You need to have someone take your place for the crimes that we've committed. Now, if you're not willing to commit, admit that you've committed crimes against God, you can't be saved. You have to come to the point where you acknowledge, yeah, I've sinned, I've done bad things. Even if they may seem like little thing, bad things to you, God is perfectly holy. He will not allow sin in His presence. Ever. So you got to be forgiven. you got to be cleansed. That could happen for you today. I hope that it'll happen for you right now. That you'll say, Lord, I want you to change me from the inside out. I want you to save my soul. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that he was buried and that he rose from the grave. And I believe that he's my only ticket to heaven. Of course, that's what Jesus said. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Speaking of Jesus. So if you need salvation today, just cash in on it. It's right here at your fingertips. Jesus said, anyone who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you ask for help, you can be assured. It's kind of like that guy drowning in the pool. A lot of times, people will flail and they'll try to hold themselves up. And the lifeguard will sit and watch until the person will quit doing all the flailing. Because when the lifeguard goes down, all he's going to get is beaten up by that person. When the person says, you know what, I, I'm, and they just admit they need help, and I'm going under, that's when the lifeguard is going to come in and pull you out, pull your limp body, because you can't save yourself. Many of us can swim. Great. When it comes to spiritual matters, you can't swim with God. You need to give up and let the lifeguard, Jesus Christ, come in and grab you and pull you out and save you. Ask for Him to save you right now. He will, for the asking. Now, for the rest of us that have, have done that, we, you and I know, just being very upfront and very honest, that things aren't just peachy keen after that. Everything doesn't just stay perfect and happy and no problems. Oh, if only it were that way. One day it's going to be that way when we're in heaven, but it's not that way now, is it? You have a burden on your heart. You have a need in your life. I want to encourage you, whether you stand right where you are and sing whatever song they sing, or if you want to come and spend some time at the altar, just you and Jesus, or if you want someone to pray with you, I or or Pastor Derek or Scott or one of our deacons, or somebody will pray with you if you need someone to pray with you. If you have a burden on your heart that you want to leave here, do it. Whatever you do, don't don't, don't leave here carrying your burden out of this room. That would be the worst thing you could do. God will supply your need. He knows what you need. The first thing we need is to be saved and changed. After that, man, you're, you're his child. He cares for you. He loves you. He is going to take care of you. Don't ignore him. Don't try to do it on your own. Come back to him and ask for help today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Would you kind of get in a, in a mood of prayer with me as we come to the, the closing time today? Do you need to give your heart to Jesus? Do you need to be born again? If you would say, you know what? I'm lost. I need to be born again. I'm, 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 I'm really struggling with this thing. I would suggest that you today, before you, before you lay your head to the pillow, in fact, I would say before you walk out of those doors, give your heart to Jesus. Be born again. Trade places with Him. He took your place on the cross. You do not have to suffer and pay for your sin forever in hell. The Bible talks about a very real hell created for the devil and his angels. I never wanted mankind there. He doesn't want you there. It's not God's will that any should perish. If you make that choice, that's on you. If you choose to pay for your sin, that's on you. If today you'd like to give your heart to Jesus, just invite him into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to take your place. Turn away. Repent of your sin. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. If you need some help with that during our invitation, come forward. I'll pray with you. We'll get it straight right now. Well, we'll have someone pray with you. If you have a burden in your life, I would ask that you come forward and, and, and just leave it right here at this altar. Would you stand with me? God in heaven, as we stand in your presence, we pray that you would move powerfully during our time of invitation. Lord, I pray that you would calm the nerves of those who are thinking, boy, I need to do something about this, but they don't really know what to do. Lord, I pray that you'd just give them the courage to come up and say, I need Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. Lord, I pray that you'd be with all of our folks who are struggling and suffering in so many different ways. I truly hope that they've been encouraged and uplifted just a little bit this morning. And for the many that just need to lay some things down today, I pray that you give them the courage to come and do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come as God leads you. Don't put it off. Come.
seated. I'm going to ask our deacons to come forward, and we're going to lay hands on uh, Judy Page. We're going to pray for her. Our deacons will come forward at this time. Our mission teams just hold off for just a minute. And um, we all love Bobby. We know him well. Most of you know Bobby Page very well. You know he's hurting right now. Over Johnson Willis. And Judy's just heartbroken. She wants him to be well. We want him to be well. And we know he's safe in God's hands. And uh, men, if you would come and just lay hands on Judy. And uh, Jim Davis, would you voice the prayer for us this morning for Bobby? praying for you. We love you. Tell Bobby today we're holding him up and have been for a while. Thank you, Cedarville, for the great job you've done with us today. It sure is nice just to come together and love on each other, fellowship, worship. But as wonderful as that is, I mean, I, I wish we could just stay here all day. In fact, if we keep going, we might. But the truth is, there's a world outside those doors that is lost and held down. That's not politically correct. That might get me thrown in jail here pretty soon. I don't know what kind of legislation is going through, but I'm kind of worried about that a little. But it's the truth. We have love. We have acceptance with God. We have each other, folks. We need to take what is in this little salt shaker, turn it upside down and shake it all over Chesterfield County and all over Lynch, Kentucky and all over Golden, Colorado. I'm going to ask our Lynch, Kentucky mission trip participants to stand over here if you'll come forward now. And our Golden, Colorado mission trip participants to stand over here with Pastor Derek. I'm not sure if we've ever had a year where more people were involved in mission trips between Botswana, Golden, Colorado, and, and, and the Lynch trip. Um, thank all of you for the sacrifices you've made. They've taken a week off work, except for the teenagers. All they're doing is playing video games. But, um, you know, some of them probably had to take a week off, too. They collected a lot of money. They've worked really hard, and now they're going to take food, clothes, stuff, and most of all, Jesus, to a bunch of people who really, really, really need to hear the gospel. So would you pray with them? Give me your hand. Y'all can join hands here. And let's uh, let's pray for these folks as they get ready to go to their trip, and then we'll be dismissed, okay? Lord God, I pray that you would bless our mission trip teams. Lord, I pray that you would use them greatly. And we're going to miss them while they're gone, but Lord, we're going to pray for them every day. And we're going to pray in faith, expecting great and mighty and awesome things from you 
as you work through their lives. Through, through the young and, and the old and everybody in between, Lord, they all have a willing heart to serve you, to glorify you by obeying the Great Commission to take the gospel. And Lord, we've taken it all around the planet through our cooperative program dollars, through our mission trip, through our, our missions giving, um, and, and, and we've taken it all over North America too with this trip to Colorado and this other trip to Kentucky. Lord, I pray that you would go before them. Lord, I pray that not one hair of their, from their head would fall, that they would not be injured, that they would not be intimidated, that they not, would not be hurt, that the, the vehicles would be in perfect running order, that they would be safe going and coming back. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, help us not to be consumed with being safe, though. Lord, help us to be consumed with living life right in the middle of your will, right in the palm of your hand, going everywhere you tell us to go, doing exactly what you called us to do. Lord, I thank you for this group from Cedarville that have, have taken... Uh, the word of the Lord in song all over all over our part of the world. Lord, I pray that you'd bless them in their studies. I pray that you'd use them greatly as they move forward to, to make an impact on our world for Christ as, 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 as they take move on into the business world, into the ministry world, and the mission field, and everywhere else they're going. Lord, take us out of this room today, this beautiful place where we've worshipped you in spirit and in truth. Take us out of here to be mighty warriors for Christ. Take us out of here with a loving spirit, with the sword of the spirit at our side, with the shield of faith protecting us, and to take the message of love, the message of Jesus, the message of hope, all over Chesterfield County. Be with us and use us. Bring us back tonight and help us to have a sweet time of doing your business, God's business, in this place. We commit our lives to you. We commit our families to you. But we commit our country to you. As far as America seems to have fallen, as fast as we are falling, Lord, we pray that you would turn us around, that you'd bring revival to our land, and that you would use good and godly missionaries, just like the ones to my left and to my right, to be part of making that happen. We love you and praise your holy name. Amen. God bless you.